All right, guys. <clears throat> Hello, and welcome again, or for the first time, I suppose. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, mainly uh, my goal in these videos is just to talk about music and to perhaps expand the audience's um, knowledge of music, uh, preferably um, good music. Um, and I recently uh, acquired uh, two records, actually, uh, Music Emporium, Eponymous, um, and then uh, Blues Magoos by the Psychedelic Lollipop. So, yes, it is, um, yeah, so anyways, um, so in terms of what you're looking at here, uh, these are both uh, very, very um, highly rated uh, vintage uh, psychedelic um, albums, uh, but definitely two, um, two extremely variable uh, pieces um, in terms of what you're uh, looking at stylistically. So I would say um, in terms of music emporium you're looking at a more uh, I don't want to say necessarily clean but a more um, sophisticated and uh, fleshed out um, kind of uh, bluesy um, experience uh, something that you uh, might equate to uh, just a more polished sound like um, the doors versus uh, something like um, a Salem Mass you know uh, but, and obviously, um, neither of these are, uh, you know, original pressings, um, but they're both quite good pressings, um, and they maintained a lot of, uh, of the original, uh, uh, fidelity in the sound. So, yeah, so Music Emporium definitely, um, and then again, this is, uh, you have to take that with a grain of salt, because this is in comparison with Blues Magoos, which is a much more... Um, gritty kind of garage uh, rock rock sound to it um, so yes now I like to think of psychedelic music as mainly falling into two categories the first of which being um, the more bluesy uh, American uh, psychedelic music and then the more kind of spacey uh, British psychedelic music. Obviously, uh, psychedelic music as a whole falls into more than just those two categories, but I would say that not only are Britain and the U.S. the two sort of uh, heavy hitters in the psychedelic music world, but also um, they have very distinct styles uh, between them. So, yeah, so, so having said that, then the, the Blues Magoos album is just a solid, very nice take on the genre, um, but that this is uh, certainly a more, um, uh, you know, gritty, uh, very much garage, very much, um, uh, very much, I don't want to say more experimental, but just, it, it feels as if you're listening to something live as opposed to perhaps more of a studio recording. Um, and, and again, take that with a grain of salt because this is psychedelic music, so it's never going to sound um, uh, overproduced, especially vintage psychedelic music. Um, so uh, just my personal opinions, obviously this is a 180 gram uh, pressing. I personally am not of the opinion that 180 grams means jack shit. Um, yeah, occasionally I'll, I'll be listening and notice, oh yeah, I guess that sounds a little better. Um, but, uh, as a whole, I find them kind of gimmicky, uh, 180 gram pressings. And honestly, so many things today that are remastered and that are coming out, you know, for the first time for, um, for newer artists, uh, they're almost exclusively pressed in 180 grams. In fact, it's kind of a rarity to even see that marked anymore because it it's it's just assumed uh, I think um, so 
Yeah, so Music Emporium, uh, great, 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 great musicianship on both of these albums. Uh, Music Emporium, definitely a more technical album. Um, the players are are really sort of uh, showing off their chops um, in a lot of places, and it almost it almost falls more into the prog uh, side or the uh, the more bluesy side. Um, with more kind of extended tracks that uh, that are very solid, but um, perhaps more, um, as I said, uh, perhaps more um, psychedelic pop. Uh, now, there is one track on here, the Nam Mio Renge Kyo, uh, which I find to be just just absolutely fantastic very inspired um uh just a, a very nice piece sonically um it involves some more tribal elements i feel like uh, it almost uh, at times feels like you're listening to something which originated in a more african um dialect i i would almost say um but but yeah so that that's music emporium so then moving on to Blues Magoos, this is what I traditionally think of when I think of psychedelic music. It is just glitzy dripping off of the, the lava lamp with LSD sunshine, you know, uh, shimmering through a cracked cocaine, cracked cocaine window. I, I mean, it's, it's just, and you can even see, I think the cover actually kind of hilariously is is so fitting because there's the, the picture of the band and then superimposed on top of that is uh, this kind of um, floral, uh, s just psychedelic um, display. And that's very much what the album is like because uh, it's just much more out there, grungy, um, it's much more feeling based um, than technique based, although the band is, 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 is uh, quite talented and um, and that shows in the music. And uh, yeah, it just feels like you're really going on a trip. Um, this feels more like um, I'm listening to an amazing piece of music, uh, but completely sober. Um, and this piece of music feels like, you know, I just jumped off of the deep end and there is no coming back. So Blues Magoos. Um, absolutely uh, would recommend 10 times out of 10 um, for uh, for for a good listen when you just you really want to feel um, I, you know I, I'm sorry if that doesn't make sense to you but uh, for all of you who, who do know what I mean uh, who have really experienced a piece of music before that that is definitely what you're looking at here um, uh, before, uh, in prior videos, I've tried to unbox it because these are, uh, these are obviously repressing, so they are, they're, they're still in the, uh, the cellophane, and then play them. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to do that, it's, it's a lot of work, and, and the setup that I have now doesn't really make that very conducive, um, both of these albums, they're, uh, music, um, Emporium, and Blues Magoo's pretty, I, I don't want to say obscure, these are, I, I personally have done, um, days and days worth of, uh, research into the most obscure psychedelic music that you, uh, could ever imagine, and these, I wouldn't say these are on that level, but, you know, they're, they're not too common, you know, certainly not like The Doors, um, Especially Music Emporium, uh, that is, um, that, that's a pretty, a pretty good find, um, but yeah, both of these albums, I'm sure, are on YouTube or uploaded illegally somewhere, um, but yeah, I, I would absolutely recommend giving them a lesson, once again, that is Music Emporium, eponymous by Music Emporium, and then Blues Magoos by Psychedelic Lollipop. For some reason, I've also seen them go by the Psychedelic Lollipops. Um, I, I don't think it necessarily matters which one you type into the search bar. I'm, I'm sure it'll pop up. Um, 
And then in terms of what's on the back, we have a picture of the band, band here. And interestingly enough, uh, something that I find just fascinating about the Blues Magoos uh, record is um, how early this record came out. What, from what I found, the vast majority of psychedelic music was produced between, um, at the very, very early end, 1967, um, Honestly, I would say more like 1968 up until 1971, 1972, maybe going as far as 1975. Um, but the Blues Magoos record came out in 1966, and although that's just a year earlier than 1967, uh, it, it, it does make a difference because um, this music is so radically different from what came before it in terms of uh, diverging from the sort of rock genus that um, that a year's time meant that stuff that came out in 1966 would have just blown people's minds away and then by 1967 obviously it wouldn't have become um, monotonous but it, it would have been people would have been more introduced to the subject I think um, that's just my opinion but but yeah, so once again, Music Emporium, Blues Magoos, I would definitely recommend checking them out. And uh, yeah, so take care and have a nice day.